Amen. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm in the Old Testament. Uh, I'm reviewing the Old Testament, but I'm going to sneak over into the New Testament here for a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, I always start my teaching out with, I'm here to reveal Jesus Christ. You're here to be like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17 to make sure that what I'm telling you is fact and that it's backed up by Scripture. Um, I usually always start with that. But uh, on the road to Emmaus, chapter 24 in Luke, Luke chapter 24, and verse 27, This is, Jesus was, didn't make himself known to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he's walking along with them, and they were depressed because the, the prophet had died. But they didn't know who he was and why he was here. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been depressed. But he began, and it says in verse 27, and Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And later on in that uh, chapter, well, in verse 32, and they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? It says in Proverbs, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord made them both. And He opens us to the Scriptures. Um, one of the things I learned recently when I was in Colorado Springs, uh, Dwayne Sheriff shared this with us, you have to be humble to receive revelation of the Word because you have to understand that God's a whole lot smarter than we are, which is true. And, and for us to reveal, receive revelation, we have to be humble. And, and I like Brother Copeland's definition of humility. Who you are and what you are is what God made you. And so uh, if we allow God, if we understand that it's God that called us to a purpose, that it's God that's working in us, that we're becoming more like His Son, Jesus Christ, then those things are fulfilled in us. And he gives us revelation knowledge then. The Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us. Luke, or, uh, John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. So, uh, it also said in, in, in verse 45 there, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Now this is when he appeared to the disciples, uh, to, the, to the apostles, and he opened it so they would understand the scriptures. So it's through the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and that word is Jesus Christ. So faith comes through him, it, uh, a revelation comes through him, pretty much everything comes through him and came through him for, from what he did for us at the cross. The, another example of it was when John the Baptist sent his uh, disciples to Jesus, and they said, are you the one, or should we look for another? And Jesus said, go back and tell John what you see. And the lame walk, the blind see, the mute talk, the deaf hear. That's all scriptures that talk about the Messiah coming and what he's going to do. So he's telling John to go back, Look at the scriptures, see what I'm doing, and, do, and did I fulfill the scriptures? And that's what he's, that, that's another example of that. Um, go to Colossians, uh, the second chapter. 
Now, Jerry used to hand out in our foundations class a, a saying, and it basically said, the old concealed, the new revealed. The old is concealed, and, and everything points towards Jesus Christ, and in the New Testament, it's all revealed through Jesus Christ. Now, uh, Colossians 2.16 Let me get on the right page. I'm on. This is basically uh, Paul talking about the, the law and grace, the difference between law and grace, and how um, the things that that were under the law were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. But he's, what he's saying is, in verse 16, so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. So what I said earlier about the old concealed is the new revealed, all these things were done in conceal, in, concealed in announcing the coming of Jesus Christ. Now go to uh, um, Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Now we're, I'll read this and then we'll get over into the Old Testament where I'm supposed to be, but I'm kind of treading on Jerry's and Robert's uh, thunder. I'm stealing their thunder. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you can't really, I mean, everything in the Bible, if you study Genesis, go to Revelation, it, it explains everything back and forth. It all speaks of Jesus Christ and Him alone. Uh, uh, Revelation, I think it's chapter 4, it says, Thus says the Amen. They call Jesus the Amen. It was Robert, one of Robert's favorite Amen. So be it unto me, that's what it means. When, when somebody says something good to you in the Word, and you say, Amen, you're saying, so be it unto me. And it calls him in that same verse, the beginning of all creation. He is the beginning of all creation. But uh, verse, Galatians 4, 21. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For is it written that Abraham had two sons, and one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman? But he who has the bondwoman has, was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise. Which things are symbolic? Now that's very important. These things are symbolic. Okay. For these are the two covenants, new covenant, old covenant, old covenant, new covenant. The one from Mount Sinai, or Mount Horeb, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar in Mount Sinai in Arabia, the court that corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage to her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. And verse 28, it says, Now we, brethren, as Isaac, are children of promise. As Isaac. Okay? So now we're going to the Old Testament. I can start what time. I don't have that much time left. Um. Go to uh, Genesis chapter 15. And we studied that before. Uh, if you remember, that's where God instructed Abr Abram to sacrifice five animals. Uh, three animals, two birds. And he instructed him to split the animals in half. And the two birds, he said, don't split them. 
and to me that represents the two birds represent a dove represents the Holy Spirit. And but the the splitting of the other animals I believe represents uh, the 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 sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. He was separated from his Father. And the the word says that. Uh, the Holy Spirit will never leave you for, nor forsake you. Even if you, when you accept the Lord when you're young and you don't walk with Him, He's still there. <coughs> you, have, you might have a hard heart and not know He's there, but He's still there. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, uh, we, <coughs> we studied that verse of Scripture and... Go to, uh, that's in Genesis chapter 15. Go to chapter 16, and chapter 16 talks about Sarah giving her Egyptian maid to Abram. They were trying to do something in their own strength. She was trying to do something, she was trying to, to uh, help something take place, but they were trying to do it in their own uh, uh, ability and not wait for God. <laughs> and so Sarah, Sarai decided, well, I'll give you my maid. Ishmael was born. Ishmael represents the law. And you, you can study that in chapter 16, read that, and see what happened. Um, basically, Sarah kind of blamed Abraham for <laughs> You know, I mean, if I was Abraham and my or Abram and my wife came and said, "You can have my maid," you know, I'd like to think I'd turn that down, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> he, <laughs> but this is all spiritually. This represents this represents the law. So it's it's not just a flesh thing. It it does represent a flesh thing, but it also represents the law. And, and you can study that. I won't go into it too much. Um, they tried to fulfill it in their own effort. It didn't work out. They had uh, Ishmael. And, and it's a good story to read and study and understand it because that's Mount Sinai. That's Mount Horeb, the same. That's where the law came from. Now... We're going to talk about grace and where grace came from. Chapter 17, if you, uh, if you go, uh, you know, I've, I've said this before, grace is the number five, all right? 17 means victory. Genesis chapter 17, verse five, verse five, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. <laughs> Ham. <laughs> hey was added to Abram. And hey, in, in the, the uh, Israelite or the Jewish people in Israel, they think it means life, which it does, but it also means grace because it's the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. But your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. And that's what it means, a father of many nations. Now, go to verse 15, which means rest. 15 is the number for rest. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarah your wife, you shall, Sarai, you shall not, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah. The fifth letter was changed in her name also. The fifth letter in Abraham's name was changed. And her, that's what her name was changed to. Grace was added, and they had a child, Isaac. Now, um, if you go to... You can read the rest of that yourself and study it from that perspective. We're talking about grace now. Grace is added. But go to uh, chapter Genesis chapter 18 and verse 9. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? So he said, Here, in, here 
in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening at the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Now this was, she was at a point where she could not have a child anymore. So this is now, this was 13 years after Ishmael was born. And (laughs) if... uh, You know, they were past the point of having children. Now it's up to God. God's going to show them how to bring grace into it. It's going to be by grace that they're going to have this child. And uh, she was past the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah, verse 12, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. Now think about that. You know, she wasn't, she wasn't thinking about having kids. She was thinking about having pleasure. You know, she's past the age of childbearing. And, you know, for any ladies that are of an elderly age, I mean, this is a promise that God gave Sarah that you can have pleasure in your old age. And I don't think, you know, I'm not going to go too far into this, but I don't think it's just talking about having a kid. This is, she's talking about enjoying herself with her Lord, who is Abraham, who's old. And she laughed about it. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. And God, then they they called Isaac, his name Isaac, which means laughter. And the promise came after they could bear children, couldn't bear children anymore, even Abraham. I mean, they, he was 100 years old and she was 90. So the promise of grace coming through, the promise that uh, Abraham and Sarah, this is, a, this is a symbolic of the law and grace. Now, If you go, just write this down, Galatians chapter 3. Paul teaches on the difference between law and grace. And he teaches in chapter 3. There are a lot of other places he does. But he had more of a revelation of grace than anybody. Romans chapter 5. Study that if you want to know about grace. Romans 5.5 is... uh, it talks about the love of God being shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. And uh, 1 Peter 5.5, 5. there goes those fives again, 5.5, 5. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Gives grace to the humble. Every time you run into a five anywhere in the Bible, I start studying it because To me, it speaks out of grace. Uh, Just this morning, I noticed uh, that uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 5, God changed Abraham's name. I knew that before, but I mean, I didn't realize it was verse 5. And verse 15, which means rest, is where he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. So it just continues on. My birthday is 5 51 Okay, so I'm called to preach this. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and my driver's license is 15 525 
<laughs> I don't know why. That's the number the state gave me. But everything, all the numbers in my life would seem to be fives. Five, five, five. Now, we talked about uh, Galatians 3. John chapter 1, verse 17. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. That's good news. John, first John, uh, or John 1.17. Moses, when he came down from Mount Sinai, had to put a veil over his face because the glory of the Lord was on his face and nobody could look at it because they weren't born again yet. They weren't saved. I mean, that, that's like if you walk into the uh, uh, tabernacle and you go into the Holy of Holies, you're going to die because in that time period because you couldn't walk in there because it was the place of God. Now we can boldly go to the throne of grace. We can walk in any time now because we're born again. A man must be born again. To understand spiritual things, you have to be born again. When Moses came down, he had to cover his face. When Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, they ran to him. And he shone with the glory of God. And if you study the Mount of Transfiguration, what what uh, God was, was what, what that was written in for, tremendous, tremendous story about the Mount of Transfiguration. In uh, Numbers, verse 6, or chapter 6, verse 24, this was an instruction from God to Moses who instructed Aaron to pray this over the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Now, in the, then they couldn't look at the face of God. Now we can look at the face of God. Because uh, the whole representation of the tabernacle the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant re represents Jesus Christ. Everything in it, it's wood, which, which represented man, but it's covered with gold, which re rep represented God. The Son of Man, the Son of, Go uh, Son of God. The mercy seat on top of it, the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Inside the Covenant, um, Don Reed, why I go to a Bible study on Tuesdays down at Dawn, he says the ABCs, Aaron's rod, the Ten Commandments, that's the C, and the bread of life, manna. Jesus is the bread of life. Everything in there points towards Jesus Christ. Does anybody know what a mezuzah is? I know Jerry does. A mezuzah? It's, it's what the Jewish people put on their doorposts, and they put scriptures in there. You can find it in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 through 9, and Deuteronomy 11, 13 through 21. The mezuzah is a little compartment that they put scriptures in. And, and I was thinking about that the other day. I, actually, I was watching a program of Zola Levitt. Um, he's passed away now, but he was a Jewish Christian. Uh, used to go to Israel all the time. And uh, the, he has another guy that's on there now. But they were talking about the mezuzah. And I recently read a book about Azusa Street, the revival that took place in Azusa Street. So, you know, uh, Pastor Bob and, and Apostle Bruce, they keep telling me to get out of the 18th century and get a computer and a notebook and you know all those things so I asked my wife I said hey look up Azusa Street or Azusa she she found Azusa Street but Azusa the name is a Syrian name and 
If you uh, don't know about Azusa Street, this is where a, a, a great revival broke out. William Seymour, uh, black man, led the revival. And young people from all over, mainly young people, a lot of young I mean, there were older people there too, but a uh, tremendous book about it uh, uh, written uh, from the stories of Brother Tommy, and that's the book that I read, that tells about all these miracles that happened. And William Seymour, he would put a, a basket over his head or a crate, and he'd just sit there and pray in tongues until the Lord released him. He'd take that off, and miracles would start to happen. The Shekinah glory of God had just filled the room. People would get healed. Arms would grow. Legs would grow. Teeth would grow. Everything. I mean, they just go through and they tell all these miracles that happened. And so I was listening, I, I saw that mezuzah, and I thought, Azusa, that's how I can remember it, mezuzah. I can remember it because of Azusa Street. Well, I looked at, my wife looked the name up, Azusa, it's a Syrian name, and it says, the name, the name Azusa gives you a strongly independent and highly creative nature with drive and ambition to have experiences and accomplish things out of the ordinary. Now, that's amazing to me. That's a miracle. That's what a miracle is, is to change the course of nature. It's not natural for somebody to grow an arm. It's not natural to grow teeth. It's not natural to uh, grow a leg or a new heart. Uh, all these things happened in that Azusa Street revival. And it just uh, reinforces the fact that God uses names. Names have meaning. Names are important. I, I shared with you before about uh, Sharon Allen, a Jewish lady from Florida, and how God gave her a revelation of uh, Genesis 5 about the names that were listed there and what they meant. And, and names have meaning. And the name above every name is what? Yeshua Yamashiach. Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The, 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 the Messiah of God. So that name is above every name. I think I'm done. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it does accomplish that which you please and it prospers in the thing whereunto you send it, Father. And we allow that word to come into our lives and to produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Take heed with what measure you measure. It will be measured back to you. We give full weight to your honor and glory, Lord Jesus Christ. We give you the honor and the glory, taking none for ourselves. We thank you for what you did on the cross. You redeemed us and you set us free. We thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Any questions?